Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. I beg to move that you do not leave the. Mr. Speaker, sir, order number six, in the name of the Leader of the House, to move that the House resolve itself into Standing Finance Committee con to consider the grant of sums of money for the service of this island. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that you do not leave the chair and that the House resolve itself into Standing Finance Committee. I beg second that, sir. The question is that the Speaker do not leave the chair and the House resolve into Standing Finance Committee. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say no. Meeting the eyes out. This house is in standing finance committee. Mr. Chairman, in the name of the Leader of the House to move the passing of a resolution to grant the sum of $107,700,000 from the Consolidated Fund and to place it at the disposal of the government to supplement the estimates 2021 to 2022 as shown in the supplementary estimates number 10, 2021-2022, which form the schedule to the resolution. Head 81. In the name of Ministry of Transport, Works, and Water Resources, in the sum of $8 million. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable <laughs> Member for St. Michael, Southeast. Thank you. Um, Chair, this is a relatively straightforward supplementary, um, seeking the sum of $11,400,000 um, to be approved under Head 81 for the Ministry of Transport, Works and Water Resources. Um, in relation to subprogram 527, it re relates to the Transport Board subsidy. Um, we would have um, approved funding um, just a few days ago in relation to Transport Board to be able to pay for wages and salaries and to allow for the operating expenses of the board. Um, this is to further top up um, that which is required in order for the Transport Board to be able to operate. Um, I don't intend to go back over all of the challenges created by COVID, but suffice to say that um, obviously we are, we've started to pick back up in terms of the ridership. Um, and so long as that continues, it is hoped that we will be able to um, ensure that we're, we're able to get passengers safely commuted across Barbados. Um, the sum of 3.4 million is therefore requested in terms of the, to cover the operating expenditure of the transport board. And in relation to account code 416, grants to public institutions, the sum of 8 million is required to support the ongoing capital projects of the Barbados Water Authority. Again, um, this is a continuation of government's extensive investment in the um, water augmentation project in terms of make, making sure that we're able to replace the mains across the country. Um, it is no mystery that the mains are well over 100 years in some cases and government has had to undertake since 2018 to do extensive replacement of those mains across the country. Uh, we have started the groundwork um, in a number of the parishes in the, in the countryside. Um, we are now in the north of the island thankfully and seeing the results there in terms of 
being able to facilitate in the interim while the work is being done, um, the, the replenishing of water to several homes. Um, obviously, there are still challenges, and Honorable Chair, um, you perhaps know better than most in this chamber the challenges directly that your constituents face. But I think you, um, like many others who we have had the opportunity to engage with, myself and the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry, a member for St. Andrew, are well aware that the efforts are ongoing. And so this $8 million is essentially to help us to continue the maize replacement program um, to ensure that we are able to execute a number of the projects that would allow for the replacement of what has been neglected for several decades um, to finally be able to allow water to flow through the taps of people across the country. And therefore, Mr. Chairman, I therefore beg to move that Head 81 do now stand part. The question is... Mr. Chairman, there's a correction to be made. The $8 million announced was for Barbados Water Authority and the amount for the Ministry of Transport and Works proper is 3,400,000. So the total amount for the ministry is 11,400,000. The question is that head 81 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. Methinks the ayes have it. Okay, 12, Parliament. She said Parliament. In the amount of $3,134,777. Mm -hmm. Honorable Member for Christchurch West. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> this is a matter uh, to basically continue uh, the renovation works, uh, the minor finishes that we still uh, have to do. As you were when I spoke last in this Honorable House, I said that there was still uh, some work to be done, even although we're here in the, the main chamber. There was still some work for sure to be done in the Senate. Uh, there's still some work to be done in, um, in the other uh, auxiliary rooms um, as well to be able to get uh, Parliament exactly to where we want it. And in addition, this also covers a lot of um, extra uh, monies left over to pay contractors for work that they would have done and have not, not yet been paid. So uh, it is an ongoing process and we continue to, to look to see exactly what else we have to do while we are still here. And as you, as you know, what we do as well is during the time that we are no longer meeting, when we are on recess for that period of time, is when we'll continue then to ramp up all the other things that we weren't able to do uh, while, while we are here. So as we are preparing, uh, I imagine, to go on recess for, for a short period of time, we'll be using that period to be able to get more work done and also to finalize and get things done. Certainly the acoustics in this room, I think, have to, to have work. Uh, we know that there's also been some, some difficulties with, this, uh, with the access um, to and from access to various rooms in terms of security, and we're working on that as well. And we're also uh, working as well to some extent to making the, um, the internet connectivity and the Wi-Fi better. So there, there are technological things that we have to do as well, and also to pay the contractors for the fantastic work they've done, and all of the, the hard labor that they did to get us back here in a timely, uh, well, I can't say timely, but at the time that the Prime Minister asked for. And uh, with those two words, I would ask that Head 13 stand part. Thank you. The question is that Head 12 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. Methinks the ayes have it.
Mr. Chairman, Head 93, Ministry of Housing, Lands and Maintenance in the amount of 14 million 900,000. Honorable Member for St. George South. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the Chamber. Am I rise to speak on this supplementary $14.9 million. And most of this money will go to Hurricane Elsa repairs. We know June last year we had Hurricane Elsa that impact us significantly, and also the freak storm. And we are still battling as a government to finalize repairs and rebuild as a result of the act of God that impacted this country significantly and in a negative way. Um, as I speak to you, we, we are about 60% completed with our repairs um, throughout the country. We have both urban development, rural development, and National Housing Corporation. They are the three institutions responsible for the repairs as a result of the freak storm and Hurricane Elsa. Um, one of the mandates of the government when we entered into the contract with our citizens to repair their homes and to rebuild their homes, and let me say to you that some of these homes had to be rebuilt as opposed to repaired because of the nature of the damage that were sustained across the length and breadth of this country. And we were, at the end of December, we had some 1,341 repairs and rebuilt. Split 50-50, 50 repairs, 50 rebuilt. But we saw more numbers, the numbers increase as we turn after Christmas and to the end of January, we saw the numbers increase to roughly 1,530 repairs and rebuild, mainly a 60-40 split in 60 repairs, 40 rebuild. And one of the things that we recognized when we went across the length and breadth of the country and the member for Christchurch West started the project, and I want to thank him and also the, the members of Urban Development Commission and Rural Development Commission and also the Ministry of Housing who has overall responsibility for coordination as well as National Housing Corporation. But we found that some of the houses were in a state of disrepair and we had to install hurricane straps and rebuild and repair houses to a state that there can withstand a category one or category two hurricane. And the stage that we are at now as a government, we have seen tremendous progress from St. Lucie to Christchurch to St. Philip with respect to the repairs. And we're estimating that all repairs will be completed before the start of, well, I shouldn't say before the start of the next hurricane season, but by the end of June, because we know as a result of climate change, we are seeing bad weather in the months of January, we are seeing bad weather in the months of February. But we are hoping to bring some respectability back to the housing stock in this country as a result of the damage sustained from Hurricane Elsa. And I, I, I want to say to you that the management and the workers within urban development, rural development, and national housing, they're working assiduously to ensure that we cover every single home across the length and breadth of this country. So this money, um, 14.9 million, most of it, if not all of it, less than 1 million, well, I would say 13.9 million will go into repairs to Hurricane Elson and Freak Storm homes that were damaged last year. So with those few words, Mr. Chair, I beg that Head 93 in the amount of 14.9 million stand proud. The question is that Head 93 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. Me thinks the ayes have it.
Mr. Chairman, had 13 Prime Minister's Office in the amount of $45 million. Honourable Member for Christchurch West. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. And first, um, this, this actually follows very smartly to what the uh, Minister of Housing uh, was speaking about relative to the 14.6 14, 14 million, I believe it is, um, 14.9 million uh, for Hurricane Elsa for uh, National Housing Corporation and, and for the Ministry. Because a significant part of this money as well uh, is also for, for Hurricane Elsa uh, repairs and replacements to houses. In fact, the Rural Development Commission is uh, a part of this money will be $5 million to meet the expenditure for Hurricane Elsa as well as to continue their, um, their pit toilet eradication program. And the Urban Development Commission in the amount of $6 million to essentially do the same thing. The biggest part of it, of course, is the response for Hurricane Elsa uh, damage, both repairs uh, and replacements to, to various houses. So although the Ministry of, of Housing is responsible for national housing, Prime Minister's Office has a responsibility for Urban Development Commission and Rural Development Commission. So it's the 14.9 on that side and then the 11 million on this side, which would give, which will put us as, into a substantial position to be able to advance the amount of work that we have to do for both the UDC and the RDC as the, for the response for, for Hurricane Elsa. The work has slow, uh, slow, slowed a bit because uh, of we having the difficulty to, to waiting for the money, but we are getting back to, to work on it as quickly as we can to get all agencies firing on all cylinders to get these houses done. As the member for St. George uh, North, uh, St. George South uh, said, and rightly so, that he wants to get all the repairs uh, finished by before the next hurricane season. And this is important. And the reason it's important is because if somebody's roof is continuing to have problems and then they get rainwater on it, then the, if that continues, then the floor will continue to get problems or deteriorate further. So we need to, to expedite and get the repairs done as quickly as possible. Replacements take a little longer because it, it involves a lot more planning, a lot more organization, of course, a lot more money. And um, uh, to, to, to the benefit uh, for the member of St. George South, he has taken the baton and ran with it. And I'm really, really happy with what he's been able to do so far. But of course, we expect more. And uh, as the Prime Minister always says, yes, we want it done, but we want it done faster. So through the urban and rural and through the national housing, through the member for St. George South, we're pushing all the agencies to get things done. I know that people are calling and asking about their various houses and so on, and we understand, we get it. We also have people in various accommodations provided by the government. We need to get them out as well and positioned into their own homes or into homes built by the government until we can then get them repositioned. So that's the first part. The other part, uh, Mr. Chairman, has to do with the vision of the Prime Minister uh, to reclaiming our Atlantic destiny, better known as road. And this uh, part of this is a, a 20 million in total, which includes that, plus works at the River Bus Terminal and renovations to Queen's Park. So reclaiming our Atlantic destiny, obviously everybody knows that Barbados was the first port of call as ships left uh, West Africa and came first to Barbados as the first uh, landing. And then obviously um, in the slave trade, they went then to other locations. So, and because we have that, that slave burial site at Newton, uh, we have a vision that we would put first a monument there and then build a whole museum and opportunity for people to come and, and have access to all the records and see what, what happened here and, and the tragedy of that time. And that is part of reclaiming our Atlantic destiny. And we need to start the design work to get the process and the ball rolling on that matter. And then the other matter, of course, is Queen's Park. Uh, we've done significant um, assessments at Queen's Park. Uh, we're, we're hoping to move the National Cultural Foundation to that location and to uplift the whole, the whole facility of Queen's Park, making it um, a, a mecca for artists who want to come and play music, um, visual artists, spoken word, um, artists to, to be able to, to have drawings and paintings for sale, and a, be, be a center where we, it can drive and, and attract people in Bridgetown to come and appreciate the wonderful artistic um, legacy and the, the artistic depth that the people of, Bar of Barbados have 
and also to provide an opportunity for visiting artists as well to be able to be, be what we call artists in residence, stay, come from another location, stay, show what their music is, show what their art is, and then move on to another location. So it's a whole plan and a whole vision that we have uh, to be able to enhance and improve Queen's Park. And then the other part of the money, of course, is to enhance the river bus terminal. Uh, I was the Minister of Transport, Works and Maintenance at the time uh, when the Constitution River uh, Terminal first. In fact, Mr. Speaker, Mr. D Mr. Chairman, you and I were at the Ministry of Transport, Works and Maintenance when we opened the Constitution Bus Terminal and started it, and started it going. And uh, it was always a problem, as you well know, that the, the vendors that there on the outskirts, um, they were in very deplorable and dilapidated conditions. So we have made a decision that we'll put some money just like how we have done for Fairchild Street. We will then go across the river then to uplift uh, the, 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 the vendors in that location as well. So that we'll have a, a comprehensive um, development, not only of Golden Square, but also Fairchild Street and then the river bus terminal. So it's to attract those and to make it safer. As you know, Mr. Chairman, many times we said that we heard that after six o'clock, nobody wants to walk through there because they didn't feel safe and all these kinds of things. So we want to put lights in, upgrade the, 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 the kiosks, make the whole facility better and more attractive. The fountains, as you know, we've put in there, uh, something that, that I worked quite hard to, to get done. And uh, I understand that they're not on all the time. We'd like to see them on all the time. And hopefully we'll get to a facility when not only we have the fountains there, but then we have an opportunity for people renting uh, kayaks, canoes, water to come right up. To the top of um, by where the globe is all the way down and a whole improvement of, of that whole area from the top of globe all the way down to, 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 to the careenage is what uh, we have for vision and improve that whole facility and of course we need funds to be able to do that and that is what that is for and then the other part which we don't really discuss is uh, money for the Barbados Defense Force so Mr. Chairman with those few words I would ask that head 13 stand part Honorable Member for St. Michael South Central. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wanted to lend a few words to this uh, discussion on this head. First to say that, you know, the fact that a Category 1 hurricane um, led to the amount of damage and destruction of the housing stock that we saw after the passage of Hurricane Elsa I think for many of us was quite sobering. And um, we talk a lot about climate change and the climate crisis, but really it, it calls for such an integrated approach across all of the sectors and ministries that are responsible for um, human settlement or human shelter, um, the way that people are housed um, the security of their dwellings, and so on. And it is, I suppose, a bit, it shows us that we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do, not just in terms of the response of the Ministry of Housing and of the Prime Minister's Office through UDC and RDC to be able to get these repairs done, but also in terms of a lot of in terms of a lot of the legislation and the policy changes that are required, and I'll tell you why I say what I'm saying. Across this Caribbean region, our sisters and brothers in other Caribbean countries that have seen this scale of loss um, have regrettably, in some cases, not been able to respond as quickly or as thoroughly uh, in some cases, for example, on Barbuda, there are still regrettably some citizens who are living in um, informal kinds of settlements, who have not been able to return to their homes or who have not been able to have new homes provided for them. It is not really encouraging or it is not very much comfort to people when we say to them, well, other countries that went through this have also seen these delays. I understand that that is not much comfort. But it, also, but it highlights, in the case of Barbados, the fact that this government has considered it its responsibility 
to make sure that people can find themselves again in safe housing. And I think that is no small thing. And while between the Ministry of Housing and the Prime Minister's Office there have been some delays, um, we know that when we're talking about a country the size of Barbados with the resources of Barbados, I'm not talking just about public resources. I'm talking about the availability of contractors. I'm talking about the availability of contractors who are able to do the work, the scale of the work, um, at the level of skill that we want. We know that these are things that we are, that we are dealing with. And so I begin by saying um, not so much to congratulate the ministries, um, because I think that before we start congratulating ourselves, we have to finish the work. But I think that the commitment to making sure that people are once again able to be in their homes and to feel safe and secure um, is a commitment that I think by this government that is quite encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I encourage my colleagues to not be daunted and to continue. But what I will say, and, and, and I do um, echo the sentiments of both the member for St. George South who spoke before and the member for Christchurch West in saying that the officers who have been working on these um, rebuilds and repairs, in my own engagement with them, take it very personally, take it very seriously. Um, certainly those officers within the Urban Development Commission that I've spoken with, that I am in constant contact with, as recently as this week, um, are working very hard, and I am sure that the same is true, even though I've had less exposure for the, for the officers within the Ministry of Housing. But I, I rose simply to say the following. While we are here to um, bring additional resources for these efforts, there are more long-standing and more fundamental policy issues that are vexing us, and that I dare say are frustrating the very noble efforts of the government. And these have to do with all kinds of other housing policy and housing legislation issues. We have a situation in Barbados, for example, where there are many people who are renting homes mm -hmm. or renting land who cannot find the landlord. There, there are people who will tell you, well, you say, do you pay land rent for this property? Because you know you have to get permission from the, from the owner of the land in order to rebuild or in order to build waterborne facilities. And you'll say to them, do you, who is, who, can you get permission from the landlord? And they'll say to you, ma'am, I haven't seen anybody come to collect rent in eight years, in 12 years. And so what we have is a situation where when it comes to, to repairs that are urgent, when it comes to allowing people to be able to live with dignity, when it comes to being able to attach waterborne facilities to homes, often the agencies that are responsible for this are not able to proceed because we have some of these issues. I believe that it is time that we have a very clear policy on the circumstances under which the government of Barbados will be able to proceed when a person cannot get the permission of a landlord to be able to live, not to make expansive and ornate changes to the home, but to, but to be able to live with dignity. Mm -hmm. That is one of the vexing policy issues that we have to be able to confront. Are we going to be able to say that after a period of 10 years, after a period of 15 years, what is the benchmark? How does the Urban Development Commission, the Rural Development Commission, the government intend to proceed in cases where people cannot get permission, but is a question of living safely and living with dignity? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the issues we have to address. I think that similarly, we also have to address this issue of a minimum standard of accommodation to be able to put your home on the rental market. And I don't imagine that some of what I'm saying is going to go over well, but I feel as if we are seeing too many situations where people are paying rent for homes that quite frankly should not pass any occupancy standard. Because if I am going to put my house in the rental pool or put my home on the market for rent, 
It should mean that people can live safely in the house. It should mean that, that the people who live there do not run the risk mm -hmm. um, that because of the quality of the housing, some harm is going to come to them or they cannot live safely. My overall point, Mr. Chairman, is that if you speak to those who are in the trenches every day, having to complete these rebuilds and repairs from Hurricane Elsa, there are issues beyond the availability of capital, the availability of resources that mean that some individuals will see significant delays in getting their homes repaired. And this, has not, this is not because UDC or RDC or NHC aren't ready to move, but it is because there are other policy issues that are intervening. So I raise, Mr. Chairman, simply to encourage us not just to throw our hands in the air and say, well, we can't proceed because we don't have landlord permission. And in the meantime, people are living in situations where they don't have access to, to waterborne facilities. They don't have indoor plumbing. They have to go in the yard to use the bathroom. Or they can't move back into a house that is safe. I'm encouraging us to confront these legislative and policy issues, to look at the legislative reform that is required, and to step forward with courage and make these changes while it is going to be meaningful in people's lives. Mr. Chairman, I'm obliged to you. Honorable Member for Kwesi West. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I listened very carefully to the member for St. Michael uh, South Central. And obviously, there, there are two or three issues uh, that I feel that, that is pertinent that I respond to. The first one has to do with improving the housing stock. And it is clear that, uh, that because we've not had a, a storm for a long time, and we all know that we do have some houses in Barbados that have suffered significant dilapidation uh, over the years. And in fact, some of the houses that, are, that have to be replaced or repaired had a component of dilapidation in them. That, that, that is clear. And uh, that dilapidation was made significantly worse and then caused the house to go from a dilapidated house to a fully destroyed house. Uh, so what the, the Ministry of Housing, when I was there, and certainly what Urban and Rural Development Commission was doing, in fact, the government is looking to do, is we're first looking to do a program uh, that I've spoke about in here in the budget uh, called uh, Strap It. Uh, in that program, as you know, we made it a document of the house, uh, the uh, hurricane strap, and we're offering those to all people who would want to be able to put straps on their, on their roof to be able to make it more hurricane resilient. Uh, yes, that is not the be all and end all, and that will not save every house, but it will add a little bit of resilience to be able to, to hopefully save or uh, enable a house that otherwise would not have withstood a certain uh, level of wind to be able to have a better chance to withstand it, certainly from the, from the roof point of view. Also, the, uh, secondly, another program we probably have to come with after is to be able to strap the foundation uh, of the house, the, 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 the uprights to the foundation. And that's a second program that the Ministry of Housing then would have to develop after. Because you can only take the stock the top, but you've got to also take the bottom to, to the ground as well. Uh, the second point uh, that, that the member raised also, which is very, very important, is we have to obviously educate our people so that they understand that when building in future that they have to build with resilience in mind. Because more and more we're going to see more, uh, more freak, uh, freak storms, more high winds, more difficulties as climate change continues to, 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 take, to take hold. We'll continue to, to see that. And that is something that we have to be aware of our building and build a higher standard. The Prime Minister also talks about the pitch of a gable roof or a hip roof on which withstands our hurricanes better. And that is something that we have to do and build in, into our, to our development. The third thing that the member spoke about has to do with um, rental and so on. That doesn't really come under this uh, particular head, but I do agree with her that um, at some point, be it the Ministry of Housing uh, or, or the other, maybe Commerce to my left, would have to look at what people put an uh, offer for, for rent and uh, whether it meets certain standards, whether it has certain guidelines. Of course, we have a great need for rental accommodation. Uh, in fact, we had people that, um, that, that, that lost uh, their, their house or 
they have repairs and have difficulty simply because a lot of people say they don't want to be paid from government because government takes too long and, and these signs of difficulties and the bureaucracy and the red tape associated with it. And there's something that we're going to have to fix. It is clear that it is a problem in government and it's an issue that we have to fix. The next matter that the member raised has to do with access to land and whether landlords are given access. And in many of the places where the Urban Development Commission and the Rural Development Commission uh, has to do repairs, well, well repairs are no issue, you can repair a house, but to replace a house, and the landlords have made it abundantly clear that they're not prepared to give permission for those replacements there. That is why we've also factored in to the program to be able to build on new government land and provide uh, facilities available for those people that are not getting permission from the landlord. So that is built into the program and we expect that. Urban Development Commission alone has 28 families, I'm told, that the, uh, that the landlord has said no, that they're not prepared to, and, and, and they're, they're not prepared to let any kind of replacements be done on that property alone. I'm not sure the number from rural, but that's the number from urban that, that I'm aware of. So yes, um, each, each situation has its peculiarities, and we have to adjust and, 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 and maneuver to be able to find the best fit for each family. But I, I am confident that we, once we continue to work at it constantly and consistently, we will get there at the end. So therefore, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to again ask the Head 13 Prime Minister's Office to stand The question is that Head 13 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. Me thinks the ayes have it. Mr. Chairman, Head 87, Ministry of Education, Technology and Vocational Training in the amount of $14,400,000. Honorable Member for St. Philip West. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The sum being requested in this supplementary will cover transfers to the University of the West Indies. You would know, sir, that this government continues to empower through education. As part of our commitment in that regard, we sought back in September 2018 to restore the payment of tuition for undergraduate students at the University of the West Indies. And a significant part of this supplementary will in fact go to that. I am told by the ministry that we now have over 6,000 students for whom we, are, we paid tuition in the 2021-2022 um, school year. We had come down. I know that we had at one point been as high as over 8,000 before the tuition was taken away from being paid by government by a previous administration. We had dropped below 5,000, and now we are rising again in terms of allowing access of Barbadian persons, students, to higher education at the University of the West Indies. And sir, this not only supports the students, but it supports all of those Barbadians who are seeking to get an undergraduate education, including those persons who would have worked and were seeking to take time away from work and then go on to further their studies as well. In addition, Mr. Chairman, this money also goes to support some of the economic costs of, the, um, of running programs at the University of the West Indies, not just the tuition. We also support the university hospital of the university, the Seismic Research Center, which you know has responsibility for monitoring volcanic and earthquake activity and has provided scientists who are able to provide the kind of support that we need in times of emergencies. We also support open campus, Mr. Chairman. And so this sum that of this supplementary for the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Studies will go a long way, not only to deal with tuition, not only to deal with economic costs, but also to support research and other activities of the University of the West Indies. With these few words, I beg to move that Head 87 stand part. The 
question is that head 87 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. We think the aye is it. Mr. Chair, Head 82, Ministry of Environment and National Beautification in the amount of $5 million. Honorable Member for Christchurch West Central. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this money uh, that we are seeking is to be used on the, the, the now of the most beautiful and natural oasis in the Western Hemisphere. And I'm referring to it as none other than our National Botanical Garden. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we, we would have, Mr. Chair, sorry, we would have started the, um, the first stage, which is building out our um, design for the final master plan. A yeah, master plan that seeks to uh, augment different types of garden, ornamental, herbal, medicinal, woodland gardens, scientific, um, fruit gardens, indigenous gardens. Gardens that will not only seek to um, beautify, but seek to have either medical significance or for food purposes. But importantly, Mr. Speaker, we don't want to forget the importance of our carbon sequestration when we plant fruit, uh, fruit trees and other trees around Barbados. Uh, Mr. Chair, sir, it is our wish and our desire and our plan to start the second stage of the National Botanical Garden, which is the, from the inception report. We have plans to have the conceptual designs and the construction designs over the next couple of months. And hopefully, Mr. Speaker, within a year, with this money, we would have the roads built, we will have utilities, proper drainage facilities, along with the amphitheater that could see the artistic and creative imagination of our people being exposed, not only in Barbados, but to the rest of the world. This is who we are as a people. And the garden represents the most natural recreational spot. And I want to thank Barbadians for, being, for using it in the way they have been using it over the past couple of months. Um, it has really brought uh, a balance of the humors in a special way in this country, um, where you can find one place where families, uh, friends, uh, persons who are planning all types of events can come to one natural, beautiful, rustic place and enjoy themselves and enjoy the Barbadian way of life. But Mr. Chair, sir, I'm equally with the same mouth and vocalizing to tell Barbadians that the bar garden must not be abused. It is your garden. You have a tangible state. We have allowed you to imagine and realize the Bajan dream by having a botanical garden that can rival any in the Western Hemisphere. I've had a chance to visit six botanical gardens. There will be none that could compete with the botanical garden at um, the boulevard, as we know it, when we are finished developing this garden. I kid you not. It is one that Barbados can hold to their, dear to their heart. So I'm appealing to Barbados not to litter in the garden because we are having some problems down there where persons are destroying the small young plants by stepping on them. So there must be a level of care and sensitivity when you are operating in the garden. We are saying to Barbados, and the Prime Minister has it as her mandate and her ultimate wish to have an all-inclusive garden where we open and accept all and sundry so they can enjoy the, um, the environment so to speak. But at the same time, you have a duty and responsibility to care that which is given to you free of cost. Because at the end of the day, it is yours. And basically, it is who we are. And in the same way we treat to our, um, our homes and our, um, our external environments, we need to treat to the botanical garden as if we have a sense of ownership of it. So, Mr. Chair, sir, I am happy to say that the $5 million over the next 12 months or so will be used to uh, complete stage two of the National Botanical Garden. And I'm looking forward to having Barbadians flock in their numbers to enjoy and experience herbarium taxonomy centers, um, germplasm um, uh, facilities, along with all the other facilities, the scientific nature and the ambience of a garden that speak to who we are. 
with those few words, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, sir, I'm obliged. I beg now to move that head 82 stand par. The question is that head 82 stand par. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. Me thinks the ayes have it. Head 35, mm -hmm. Ministry of People, Empowerment and Elder Affairs in the amount of $2 million. Thank you so kindly, Mr. Chair. I am very happy to be able to, to raise, to give some explanation as to the funds that we are being asked during this supplementary to support. The $2 million that we're requesting for the National Assistance Board, sir, would be to make some much needed repairs to two facilities that are part of the board. I must tell you that when I was given the opportunity to lead the ministry, as most of us do or would when we assume responsibility for a ministry. I did a tour of the facilities under the National Assistance Board, but under all the ministries uh, purview. And what we saw suggested that we needed to do some urgent repairs. I was just saying to the Honorable Member for St. Peter that um, the timing at the time seemed a little bit bad for me because I didn't have the opportunity to influence the estimates but um, I felt as if there was a need to do these repairs urgently. Um, what we saw at Lancaster, sir, suggested that there was a need for work and at Vauxhall. And I want to thank, of course, my PS, who would have worked assiduously to try to get some recommendations to the Ministry of Finance. And I also want to thank the Minister in the Ministry of Finance, the member for Christ Church, East Central, with whom I only recently had the conversation <laughs> requesting the need for these funds. Mr. Mr. Chair, sir, the, the situation at Vauxhall, Vauxhall was built in 2004. And at the time that Vauxhall was built, uh, there was even then some concern that there needed to be some remedial work done at Vauxhall, which was not done. Um, over the years, Vauxhall would have been in need of even more work. And this would allow us to do some significant things. So one of the things that I feel very strongly about the ministry is that the Ministry of People's Empowerment must be that ministry. I think all of us should be, but this must be that ministry where you have complete and total disability access. It must be fully accessible for persons with disabilities. And so some of these funds would allow us to be able to retrofit, sir, and to make this space more disabled friendly and allow the persons whom we represent, sir, to feel safe when they visit there. We also have to do a lot of work with the bathrooms. Um, some of them are leaking but also to make those disabled friendly as well. We have to do work in the kitchen. In fact, sir, we had situations at Vauxhall where the, the handrails literally fell off on some of the upper floors. And so those persons are cautioned, literally with caution tape, not to go over the side. So there's work to be done at Vauxhall. These, these monies would allow us to do that. At Lancaster, sir, there's also a need for work. Lancaster was earmarked for work, but when we visited Lancaster, it was clear to me that what was being proposed to be done would definitely not be enough. And this piecemeal approach to doing things in government is perhaps one of the reasons that we find ourselves constantly with high maintenance bills and find ourselves with um, buildings and infrastructure that is falling apart. So these money, sir, would allow us to be able to satisfy the need for us to bring um, our facilities into the modern era. It is our intention, of course, to pursue these works with great haste uh, over the next few months to ensure that. At Vauxhall, we would have to do it piece by piece um, because we can't close the facility. It is currently occupied. It is our intention, however, to close Lancaster and do the full repairs at Lancaster and then reopen Lancaster mm -hmm. to persons. And the reality is that before I close, just let me say, sir, that the Conditions for both the elderly and persons with disabilities continue to trouble me. I know for sure that we need to have a facility for persons with disabilities, especially persons who are over 18 with absolutely nowhere to go in Barbados. We have to be able to fix it. For persons with disabilities, sir, sorry, for older persons, it is clear as well that we are facing more and more persons who are either homeless because of life circumstances or the breakdown in relationships. We have to be able to offer facilities that people could move into. 
I would like to think that before my term is over that we can have another facility like Vauxhall where persons who are older and perhaps can afford can have a place to go and be taken care of. But we also have to have a facility for persons who can't afford. Mm. And that Barbados must be that place where you know, a person's life chances when they get older is not determined by their economic fortune. So sir, with, that, with those few words, I am very happy to be here to say that these $2 million will be used to repair both Lancaster and um, the Vauxhall home, both of which will be used to, to house persons who are getting older, as we all will, as we all are, actually, as we saw in the grain in some of us uh, as we go forward. But we have to take care of our older people, sir. And I want to again thank the members in the ministry who worked very hard to get this here. And I really want to thank the Ministry of Finance, because while I felt that this needed to be done, I never thought I would have the opportunity to do it in a sap and so urgently. So with those few words, sir, I ask that head 35 stand for. The question is that head 35 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. We think the ayes have it. Mr. Chairman, head 15, Cabinet Office, in the amount of $2 million. Honorable Member for Christ Church, East Central. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the sums of money is being requested under Cabinet Office, as you are aware, Mr. Chairman, relate to the fact that we had a general election in January, uh, all of us in this chamber, the people of Barbados, give their overwhelming support to represent their interests. And as usual, as you would be aware, Mr. Chairman, with the protocols in place with respect to the execution of the, of the election, persons would have seen, certainly on election day, in every polling station, persons sanitizing and the extra set of, of protocols on the outside and all of that, which meant that the monies available to execute the, the election on behalf of the, the EBC, we are seeking to top up now from this particular head to allow them to settle all of the outstanding uh, matters in, re in respect to the election. Um, for the avoidance of any doubt, Mrs. Mr. Chairman, uh, was it is $2 million being allocated here, the cost of the election is approximately $5.4 million by the EBC. So I just want the public to be aware that it, that is the cost um, that the EBC has put to us in relation to, the, to be able to conduct the general election in, in, in January. Of course, in recent days, the public certainly has seen the, the declarations that we all made, um, Mr. Chairman, with respect to, again, the fact that we had to conduct an election in a COVID environment, mm -hmm. and therefore the extent to which um, expenditures as declared, and it is particularly interesting, sir, that a few were not included in the in the report, but that is subject, sir, I'm sure, um, for another um, discussion at another time. But I think it's important for the public to also be aware that representation costs money, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman and the extent to which I know that we are moving forward, certainly within the next um, fiscal year, to focus on a number of other um, commissions to look at parliamentary reform and a number of other matters. The reality is that the cost of executing the election in this country um, in the context of the EBC and ensuring that, first of all, all of everything is in order, mm. including the production of, of, of those lists, um, in ensuring that the, the registering officers are able to, to do the, re the relative administrative works, the, the counting and the process with respect to counting um, being done in a manner that allows all of us to feel comfortable that when the returning officer declares us, sir, as the duly elected representative, that everything has gone smoothly. And to the extent as well, sir, as 
the police officers who, um, during the course of the conduct of the election, um, have their duty to ensure that everything goes according to plan. And I really want to thank all of the persons, including not just the police officers, the staff of the EBC, but certainly those persons who I got so familiar with them on, on election day, going in and out of the, the, the polling stations, um, Mr. Chairman, that those persons who were sanitizing hands at the doors and, and, and made sure that the entire process was done as safely as possible. I thank them for, for the work that they, that they did, sir, because without that, um, I suspect we, we could have had a different outcome with respect to the conduct of the election. And so this is just um, to be able to allow them to complete um, the, the payments with respect to the, the general election. I think we are all satisfied with the judgment of the people, sir, um, that they made um, two months ago. Um, governing is never, is never an easy exercise, but I think that with the significant mandate that the people um, gave to us again to conduct um, their affairs, that as members of parliament, we come here to make sure that everything, sir, is, is done in the way that it ought to be done in order to make sure then that persons can feel comfortable with respect to the conduct of, of elections. And so, Mr. Chairman, I beg to move that head 15 in the amount of $2 million stamp out. May I second that, sir? The question is that head 15 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. Methinks the ayes have it. Head 33, Ministry of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs, in the amount of $3 million. Honorable Member for Christ Church East Central. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we all know, sir, the, the trials, if you like, sir, and tribulations as it relates to the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. Um, the sums of money being requested here is to cover um, some of the operating costs with respect to the corporation um, up until the end of the, of the financial year. Um, let me remind the public through you, sir, that in 2018, we had indicated to the public or given the public an option to, to, to participate in solving or participating in, in, in indicating how we will resolve some of the, the reforms within state owned enterprises. Um, as the Prime Minister said in her, in her budget speech um, just a couple of weeks ago, that the reforms that we had intended to complete certainly two years ago now need to be executed. Um, members of the public would see certainly um, being advertised on the CBC and other media in relation to um, expressive interest to, for private entities to be able to help partner with government to be able to, to transform and reform the CBC to an entity that obviously is a much more digitally agile media company um, for the 21st century. And therefore, whilst these funds are intended to resolve some of the operational issues that they are currently having, the reality is that the transformation of the, of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation into a media company capable of producing the kind of content that certainly um, the 21st century um, media companies normally do, that we can utilize certainly some of the very um, content in relation to the archives and those types of things with respect to, to the content that they have in order to make sure that not just leveraging that, that content, but the creation of new content within um, a 21st century Barbados to be able to put it on a much more commercially viable um, operation. And therefore, these, these sums here are to, to settle the current financial issues, but the, the interested parties are encouraged, obviously, to submit the necessary um, expressions of interest with respect to, to um, dealing with the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. And we certainly look forward to seeing what is proposed, because it, these are areas that um, can be much more um, commercially viable with the appropriate investment as well as management structure and expertise 
that can compete within the context of a global um, media environment. And so, Mr. Um, Chairman, I beg to move that head 33, stand back. The question is that head 33 stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. Me thinks the ayes have it. Head 34, Ministry of Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment in the amount of $5 million. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you would recall, sir, that in the summer of 2020, sir, when we were going through and trying to understand where we were landing with respect to COVID-19 and the impact that it had, you recall, sir, that we worked with the private sector, particularly those within the, the hotel and tourism space, to devise a program to help support enterprises to get them through what certainly was the most difficult um, financial um, circumstances for the tourism industry. And therefore, the best program, sir, um, was designed as an uh, intervention by government in order to make sure that we had sufficient, a sufficient number of companies and entities, sir, that can survive the pandemic. And I think we've been successful in doing that, sir, because as we speak, certainly with the number of tourists that we've seen on island, um, certainly this year, that it says that we, the, ju the judgment that we took to support those enterprises, sir, to get them through the pandemic was a sound um, judgment, sir. And therefore, um, I commend certainly those persons who's, who, who not just devised the, the plan, but those who stepped up and agreed to the reforms in terms of some of the, the hotels and restaurants and the attractions to be able to put themselves in a position to access the working capital that was provided through this, this particular program um, Mr. Chairman, which now has allowed us really, sir, to capitalize on the, what we anticipate will be a significant and quick recovery with respect to tourism. Um, and so therefore, these monies are being voted, sir, to um, provide additional support to that program. We anticipate, sir, um, as we said, um, which started in October of 2020, that it would take it was a two-year program, so it should come to an end, sir, at the end of September of this year. And, of course, a number of triggers were in place, sir, with respect to the recovery, whether or not the, the revenues were recovering to 90% of the 2019 level, sir. So we are in the process of evaluating that because, as we've seen, sir, over the course of the last um, few weeks and months, we've seen a significant uptick with respect to arrivals and spend and we are seeing a lot of that activity taking place right now and therefore I would anticipate sir that over the course of the coming months that entities may very well on their own basis voluntarily um, exit the program but the program remains available for those to be accessed and therefore we are confident that having done this specifically for um, as an investment mechanism um, through the EGFL that we, are able to, that we were able to ensure that a significant part of our economy with respect to the earning of foreign exchange, that we've been able to preserve that, sir, as best we could given the circumstances that we were faced with. And so these $5 million, sir, are voted to help support um, that program. And therefore, I beg to move, sir, that head 34, stand back. The question is that head 34, stand part. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. Honorable members against, we say nay. We think the ayes have it. Head 39, Ministry of International Business and Industry in the amount of $5 million. Honorable member for St. Michael North. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I rise to provide some brief remarks and insight into the requested supplementary of $5 million for what was the Ministry of International Business and Industry. Of course, this $5 million, Mr. Chairman, is being asked for or requested to supplement the operations of the BIDC, the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation. Uh, you would understand and appreciate, Mr. Chairman, that the BIDC as an entity has oftentimes been recognized as a landlord of government, being the primary corporation or entity that's responsible for the industrial estates and properties that belong to government or to the what used to be the crown, but belongs to the government to the state. At this point in time, we are asking for this five million dollars to help us to supplement the continued operations of the BADC in maintaining the various estates. It is an ongoing exercise, Mr. Chairman. As we all know, once a building is being used, once it is occupied by various tenants, there will be what is called wear and tear. And it is an ongoing exercise of maintenance uh, and, and preventative and corrective maintenance that needs to take place. So a, a, a significant portion of the $5 million that's been requested will be used to continue the ongoing maintenance program of the BADC for the various estates. Uh, I, would often, I would also like to put some context. Uh, in the previous financial year, Mr. Chairman, the BADC would have voted or would have been voted or allocated about $5 million less than what its previous years would have been. Uh, we would have had a $5 million cut. And uh, unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, we realized during the course of the year that that cut would have, been, uh, would have hindered our ability to execute all of the programs that we had slated for the financial year. And that is why now we are seeking this supplementary. In addition to that, Mr. Chairman, uh, we must appreciate and I would like the public to understand and recognize that the BADC is now evolving as an institution, as a corporation. It is no longer simply just a landlord. It is not simply just managing industrial estates, but it is carrying on and executing a wider mandate. And that is to expand and to grow not only manufacturing, but of course, most importantly, to help us in the facilitation of our export growth. So there's a number, there are a number of initiatives that have been created to support that initiative. And uh, this $5 million will go as well to help us to continue the ongoing works in that regard. I speak firstly uh, and foremost to the shared use facility. We have a shared use facility that is right now under construction, Mr. Chairman. It is well on the way in its development and its production. And uh, this shared use facility would allow many of our manufacturers to have access to a shared space, which would automatically reduce their significant overhead costs uh, one of the largest or biggest issues that, that our manufacturers, our local manufacturers, if I will say manufacturers in general, that they face is that they have significant costs of production, significantly high costs of production. So when we can give them access to a space, Mr. Chairman, where they're able to utilize state-of-the-art technology, state-of-the-art equipment uh, at, a, at a reasonable and shared cost, at a shared cost, and we are able to spread that cost across all of the manufacturers in the industry, then that individual, at an at a, at a individual level, at an individual um, uh, point, we see that uh, that can reduce, Mr. Chairman, the cost to those individual producers and manufacturers. The second uh, part of this $5 million has been requested as a supplementary relates to our mechanics bay. Once again, which is another shared use facility that allows mechanics, as we know, we call them roadside mechanics. Uh, many of us across uh, the length and breadth of our, of our island, uh, we as members of parliament are, are, I would say, inundated with many uh, a constituent, uh, I don't want to say complaining, but bringing to our attention uh, the, 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 the several roadside mechanics that are in their areas and uh, we know of course Mr. Chairman that this could, per, this could create a bit of a, a, a bother for some of the residences that we represent. So we as a government forward thinking as we are would have uh, sought to introduce what we are calling our mechanics bay which is uh, going to allow roadside vendors an opportunity to, to utilize a shared space to execute and to carry out their business. Uh, we're hoping, the vision is, that we'll be able to have several of these bays all over the island. 
and uh, we'll be able to therefore allow a space for the roadside mechanics to be able to use on a daily basis so that they can move away from the residential areas where they currently now operate. Uh, that's, that same mechanics bay, Mr. Chairman, has been under construction for some time. And uh, again, the $5 million is uh, being asked for, the additional $5 million is being asked for to support that ongoing work on the mechanics bay. So with those few words, Mr. Chairman, the $5 million that we're asking for is basically to continue to, to supplement the operations of the BIDC uh, for the rest of the remainder of the financial year. Uh, with that, therefore, Mr. Chairman, I beg to move that head 39 in the amount of $5 million, Stampar. The question is that head 39 stand for. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. He thinks the ayes have it. Yeah. Don't sound so excited. Honorable <laughs> member for St. <laughs> Michael. So please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I therefore beg to move that you do not report progress to his honor, the speaker, and the passing of one money resolution in committee. The question is that I do know, can we have a seconder? The question is that I do now report progress to his honor, the speaker the passing of one money resolution in committee. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. Honorable members against, please say nay. He thinks the ayes have it. Chairman of the Standing Finance Committee has reported the passing of one money resolution in committee. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that this resolution be read a first time. The question is that the resolution be read a first time. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no. We think the ayes have it. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that this resolution be read a second time. Questions that the aforementioned resolution be ready a second time. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no. We think the yes have it. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that this resolution be now agreed to. The question is that this resolution be now agreed to. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no. We think the yes have it. This resolution stands passed. Order number four, sir. We name the Honorable Minister of Finance to move the passing of the resolution that Parliament rescind the designated account code 316 under which the grant of $50 million was voted for the Ministry of Finance, Economic Affairs, and Investment, appearing on resolution number two, it only stated as number 11 previously, and passed by the Honourable House on the 24th of August, 2021.
All I'm wearing is a Michael E. Sandra. Christ Church, sir. Christ Church, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, before I begin, sir, um, I beg to move that resolution number, order number five, be taken as a cognate debate since both relate to each other. Sir. The question that resolution four and five be part of a cognate debate as they're inextricably linked. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no, me think the ayes have it. Continue, honorable member. Thank you very much, sir. Um, and a relatively simple matter, sir, um, and I regret the chamber has, uh, will have to resolve it here. You recall, sir, that we came in August 2021 to vote $50 million for the National Insurance Fund to help recapitalize the Unemployment Benefit Fund, um, which had to borrow monies from the, uh, the National Insurance Fund um, because of the pandemic and in order to be able to settle the unemployment claims for those persons who were displaced immediately upon the cessation of international travel and the lockdown that um, was introduced in April of 2020. And so, sir, a, a relatively simple matter, and regrettably, the, the wrong account code was stated on the resolution. Instead of 416, it was stated as a 316, um, sir, so 443. And, and therefore, the, the House is being asked simply to rescind the decision with respect to, to, to the fact that it was placed on the wrong account code and to be able to allow us to approve um, under Resolution 5 the placement of the right account code 416 for which it was intended in order to make sure that everything is in order. Um, just for the benefit, sir, of the Chamber, the remainder of the recapitalization of the, of the fund will be done through the issuance of um, Series J bonds to the National Insurance, which would allow the government of Barbados to be able to settle um, that over the course of the next um, three and a half years. And really, sir, and we hope that obviously with respect to the clear, the clear signs of a recovery within the labor market, given the economy has reopened, um, we do know that obviously the government had to introduce some temporary programs in order to help um, offset some of the unemployment that was created um, from COVID-19. But we are confident, sir, that certainly over the course of the next um, 18 months or so, that we should see um, with the, and this is sir, subject to no other significant intervention, that unemployment levels and therefore contribution levels back to the unemployment fund, we'll see that fund obviously starting to, to be a, uh, better able to service obviously with respect to the payment of unemployment benefits as they arise in the normal way. And therefore, um, these two resolutions, as I said, sir, are really just particularly um, administrative, regrettably to replace a four, uh, sorry, a three with a four, um, but allow the Parliament, obviously, sir, to make sure that everything is in order with respect to the, administ the administ administration of its business. And so, sir, um, with those very, very, very few words, um, I beg to move that this resolution do now pass. That is in respect of, of order number four, correct? The question is that the aforementioned resolution do not pass. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say no. Me think the ayes have it. This resolution stands passed. Order number five, sir. Name Honorable Minister of Finance, to move the passing of a resolution that Parliament approve the allocation under a Account code 416 and to place said code under subprogram 0142 National Insurance Department under head 34 Ministry of Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment, appearing in resolution number 2, 2021, in error stated as previously as 11, 2021, approved by this Honorable House on the 24th of August 2021, and to make Consequential amendments. There too. I remember President Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that this resolution do not pass. 
questions that the aforementioned resolution do not pass. All those all members in favor of PCI. Those against PCI no, we think the eyes of it. This resolution stands passed. No, I just say. Honorable Leader, Government Business. Thank you, um, Honorable Speaker. Um, with that, we have come to the end of today's sitting. And I therefore move, beg, beg to move the adjournment of the House until the 26th of April at 10 a.m. The question is that this honorable chamber be adjourned until the 26th day of April at 10 a.m. in the forenoon. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no. We think the yes of it. This honorable chamber stands adjourned until Tuesday the 26th day of April at 10 a.m. in the forenoon.